Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dave. Today we're going to be looking at a very ancient linear algebra problem that comes from China. What makes this such an interesting question is not so much the difficulty of the question, but the time period from which it comes. This question was written down about 1700 years ago in about 260 AD. However, it uses a technique that is very similar to what is known in the West as Gaussian elimination. Given the time period, I thought it was very interesting and I thought I would share it with everybody. With that said, let's first review Gaussian elimination. As we know, Gaussian elimination was named after the famous German mathematician Gauss, who lived from 1777 to about 1855. In Gaussian elimination, we use elementary row operations to rearrange an augmented matrix so that the lower left-hand corner has as many zeros as possible. To do this, we are basically allowed to do three things. We can swap the positions of any two rows. We can multiply any single row by a non-zero scalar. And we can add one row to a scalar multiple of another. Now let's take a look at the question. This question comes from a text known as the Nine Chapters on the Art of Mathematics, which is a textbook from ancient China. It was compiled from sources in the year 263 AD, and it mostly focuses on matters of practical calculation things like calculating the price of commodities or finding out the area of a field, for example. Entries in the book usually take the form of a statement of a problem, followed by the statement of the solution, and then an explanation of the procedure that led to the solution. This is somewhat different from the patterns we see in ancient Greek mathematics, which attempt to derive things from first principles. However, this was probably used as some kind of a manual for state bureaucrats, thus the focus on more practical matters. In any case, here is the question. As we can see, there is the Chinese text on the right-hand side of the screen. In chapter 8 of the book, which is simply titled Rectangular Arrays, there are several problems involving calculating the yields of grain and prices of different products. And the method they use for this is solving systems of linear equations. The first question in this chapter reads, there are three grades of grain, top, medium, and low. Three sheaves of top grade, two sheaves of medium grade, and one sheaf of low grade are 39 doughs. Two sheaves of top grade, three sheaves of medium grade, and one sheaf of low grade together are 34 doughs. One sheaf of top grade, two sheaves of medium grade, and three sheaves of low grade are 26 doughs. How many doughs does one sheaf of top grade, medium grade, and low grade grain yield respectively? For reference here, a dough is simply an ancient Chinese unit of measurement. And in this textbook, they give the algorithm immediately after the question. And it says, using the array method, place three sheaves of top grade grain, two sheaves of medium grade, and one sheaf of low grade grain, and their total 39 doughs in the right hand column. Then put the other two columns in the middle and on the left. Keep in mind that in ancient China, writing was done from top to bottom and from right to left. This gives us an arrangement of numbers that would have looked something like this. So as we can see here, in the right-hand column, we have the numbers 3, 2, 1, and 39. In the middle column, we have the numbers 2, 3, 1, and 34. And in the leftmost column, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 26. The algorithm continues by saying, multiply the middle column by the number of sheaves of top grade grain of the right column. Then eliminate 
top grade grain from the middle column by repeated subtraction of the rightmost column. What this means is because there are three sheaves of top grade grain in the right column, you take every number in the right hand column and multiply it by three. Next, because three goes into six two times, you multiply every number in the right hand column by two and subtract it from every number in the middle column. This leaves us with 0, 5, 1, and 24 in the middle column. The process would then be repeated for the leftmost column. Again, because there are three sheaves of top grade grain, you multiply every number in the left hand column by three. Next, because three goes into three exactly once, you simply subtract every number in the right hand column from every number in the left hand column, which gives us 0, 4, 8, and 39 in the left hand column. Finally, we are instructed to multiply the left column by the remaining quantity of middle grade grain from the middle column and carry out the same subtraction. Now the remaining two numbers in the left column decides the yield of the low grade grain. The upper one is the denominator and the lower one is the numerator. So essentially we repeat the same process that we did, except now because there were five sheaves of remaining middle grade grain, we multiply all of the remaining numbers in the left hand column by five. And then we do the associated subtraction, which gives us in the left hand column 0, 0, 36 and 99. Now we can use these numbers to find the yield of the low grade grain, which is going to be 99 over 36, or simplified, that would come out to be 2 and 3 quarters. The rest of the algorithm simply instructs us to compute the yield of the medium and top grade grain by that calculation. So again, once again, here is the matrix that we had, and we can simply go back and recalculate the yield of the middle grade grain by doing 24 minus 1 times 2 and 3 quarters divided by 5, which would give us 4 and a quarter for the yield of the middle grade grain. For the top grade grain, we would use the same values and we would have 30 minus 1 times 2 and 3 quarters minus 2 times 4 and a quarter divided by 3, which gives us 9 and a quarter for the yield of the top grade grain. When we're paying attention, this algorithm is essentially the same as solving a system of equations using the elementary row operations. So in modern notation, this would be 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 39, 2x plus 3y plus z equals 34, and x plus 2y plus z is equal to 26. In modern notation, we could reduce this to the following matrix. In the top row, we have 3, 2, 1, and 39, 0, 5, 1, and 24, and in the bottom row, we have 36 and 99. And the solving of this system of equations would be done in almost an identical fashion to the method we saw earlier. It is simply rotated 90 degrees. All right, thank you everybody for watching my video. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.